Welcome to 519 Connect, where the Windsor Police Service connects with members of our community. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Welcome to 519 Connect. I'm your host, Constable Jamie Ajete Nelson, Diversity Officer for the Windsor Police Service. Hi, I'm Constable Bianca Jackson from Corporate Communications with the Windsor Police Department. And today we have Kim Willis. Kim Willis is the Director of Communications and Mental Health Promotion at the Canadian Mental Health Association, Windsor and Essex County Branch. She has over 20 years of fundraising and communication experience, primarily in education and healthcare sectors. In her current role, Kim is responsible for fundraising, communications, mental health promotion, and the Youth Wellness Hub. Working with her team, they launched the Soul Focus Project campaign in 2017 to be proactive in making Windsor and Essex a mentally healthier community. Kim has her Master's of Arts in Journalism from Western University and has also has her CFRE fundraising designation. She has served on the boards of AFP, CAGP, the AFP Canadian Foundation, Brain Injury Association, and the Teen Health Centre. Welcome, Kim. Thank you for the invitation. This is awesome. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I know of you. Um, when I saw your name, I was like, I know Kim from somewhere, but... I hadn't met you, but from the Soul Focus Project, um, uh, Kurt Downs, yeah. Noel Montcalm, and Tony Smith are a few people I know, and they spoke about the program and they spoke about you. So, um, you know, that was that was something I, I looked forward to. Um, can you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. When um, I started at CMHA, we um, were just we would do mental health promotion off the side of our desk, so to speak. It wasn't something that we, um, you know, had a designated department or team. So when we had a new CEO start, Claudia Dembor, we engaged the community around strategic planning, and they said CMHA is the lead community provider of mental health services, and people look to you to provide that education and awareness. And they really encouraged us to look at sourcing it and resourcing that to make it more of a focus. So fast forward, um, we worked with Douglas Marketing Group, a local marketing firm, and shared that we wanted to do something to let the community know that we had a renewed focus around mental health training and awareness, that we wanted to do something around suicide prevention, we wanted to address the stigma that's still real around mental health and addictions, and be more proactive as opposed to reactive. Um, And uh, they brought forth some different concepts, and there was unanimous support around the whole So Focus idea. It just worked for so many reasons, and nice play on words that, you know, mental health was our sole focus, um, the, you, the soul, your internal soul um, being, you know, what you rely on around your mental health. And um, so it, was, it had so many um, creative aspects to it and ways that we thought it would resonate. And so we started small. We thought, well, let's reach out and uh, get some people in our community on board to become sole focus ambassadors. So I think we started with about 15 and we now have over 100. And these, yeah, they're from all walks of life. So like you said, um, Noelle Montcalm's an Olympian. Kurt Downing is, uh, you know, a local educator, but big in sports. Um, Tony Smith is, you know, formerly a Windsor police officer, but now um, has a gym. But we have people from all walks of life. And, you know, I think that was always important to show that we all have mental health and we all struggle. And, um, you know, we still have people that come forward and we welcome that to bring on new ambassadors to share their story and let people know you're not alone and it impacts all of us. Oh, that's great. That's uh, uh, it's a great group and it's uh, cool to see that it, it grew from 15 to, you know, over 100 and it's important different walks of like mental health is everywhere and uh, there's different ways um, as I was speaking with my uh, co-op students, different ways to deal with it and to see that uh, you're bringing different faces helps people identify. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think it's also interesting that mental health prevention is not funded through um, the government. So we had to embark on a fundraising campaign to support this. And in true Windsor Essex fashion, um, we have an amazing community and they certainly rose to the occasion we had set an initial fundraising goal of 500000 over three years. So we thought, I don't know how this is going to be received. You know, mental health hasn't been something 
that has historically raised the same amounts as, say, cancer prevention does um, or, or different illnesses. And uh, we quickly reached that goal. And so fast forward, by 2020, we'd surpassed 1.5 million. Wow. And, um, wow. yeah, and it That's continues great. to, to um, you know, be really important. And I just think that says so much about where people's priorities are mm-hmm. and, you know, and the community that we live in. So that has just allowed us to, to do so much more work. And we started... Uh, with one mental health educator, we now have three. Um, like our team has been able to expand and do so many exciting things that would not have been possible without this. And um, there's also even another branch, the Waterloo branch of CMHA has adopted a form of the Soul Focus project. So it's been exciting to see it take shape. And and the fact that I could walk in here today and uh, someone knew about it, I'm like, that just like warms my heart. That's awesome. No, that's beautiful. And it sounds like you're getting a lot of support from so many different avenues. And um, so with that support, though, what are some of the programs that you, that you have to offer? Um, we do a lot around, like I said, suicide prevention and awareness. So there's a suite of programs that um, is available. We've done a lot actually with first responders and been able to provide assist training, which is two day intensive um, training around suicide awareness and what to look for. We do um, like stuff around bereavement supports and grief. Uh, we've also done work with um, first responders. So there's a mental health coalition uh, with leadership from across the county. And um, so we've been able to do a lot around peer support um, prevention. And, uh, you know, we, we were able to establish a website. We've, we help first around first responder supports and supports for families. Um, you know, we've been able to go into schools and do outreach there and, um, you know, hiring these additional individuals uh, has been really helpful as well. Those are just some of the things. Just a small Mm -hmm. snippet of what you have. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. So where, where are you located these days? We have our main branches at 1400 Windsor Avenue, um, but I think it's deceiving. Our staff, we're, I think we're closer to 200 now, so it's, it's, it's grown significantly. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's hard to envision because a lot of our um, staff work out in the community. So we do have staff designated to the, to the county work that's done. Um, we also have a health center on uh, site at 1400 Windsor Avenue. So that's nice that we have the access to the primary care services mm-hmm. to align with the mental health supports. Um, so, yeah, we're very much in the community, but we our main location is on Windsor Avenue. Yeah. So you're, you're growing, um, uh, you know. One of the reasons, uh, you know, we're kind of here because um, mental health is everywhere. But um, you have a, a youth wellness hub. Um, that's something new. I, I, I toured that when it had just opened up. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about that when it started? How, yeah, I would yeah. love to. Um, so even before COVID, um, we had engaged with youth and families because as part of our outreach work, I was just hearing from so many families and partners around, um, you know, seeing what the situation was and what the reality was. If you tried to access mental health supports for youth and their families, it was frustrating. And we heard repeatedly that navigating the mental health care system is a nightmare. Um, Having to retell your story every time you were handed off to another provider and the wait times were just are quite frankly um, unreasonable. And uh, so we, um, like I said, we had done some focus groups with youth and families, but also with providers. And uh, we started to form a a steering committee with um, the major players that help uh, support mental health of youth. And uh, and then COVID happened. So we had agreement um, that we needed to do something that had like was low barrier, easy access, um, having everything aligned under one roof would have been a dream. And um, so, like I said, then COVID happened and we had to pause. But we continued to work in the background when we had a chance uh, in between the waves. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we all remember that. Yeah. Come outside today, not yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Come outside. Oh, don't yeah. talk to each other. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So in between the waves, um, we continued to engage and slowly work our way through the process. And we weren't sure... I don't think any of us were sure. How are we going to fund this? Or where is it going to be located? Where are the resources going to come from? But for me, inaction wasn't an option. And I think a lot of my colleagues 
were in agreement and certainly families and, and youth mm-hmm. were on board. And I received a call last June um, from the executive director of Youth Wellness Hubs Ontario, and she said, congratulations, Windsor is one of four new sites that's going to receive funding. And I was like, how did this happen? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, she goes, I don't know, but congratulations, and you'll be in touch, So, or we'll be in touch. So um, we received the, the notification officially in June, we brought our steering committee together. We quickly knew that as part of this model, it's youth-driven and youth-informed. Um, and it's very much in alignment with all of the things that we had heard needed to be addressed. So that is that you do co-locate services under one roof. Um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. There aren't wait times that drop-in services are available. Um, and you don't need a referral. And uh, so those were all beautiful things to hear. Um, And so last summer, we recruited our Youth Advisory Council, who essentially is like the board of directors for the Youth Hub. We had an overwhelming response, and it's an amazing, amazing group of of young people and individuals who have met bi-weekly since last September. And they have informed um, everything around programming, different groups, different elements that should be incorporated. Um, so that 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 that's been in place. But then we hired a manager, and over the next few months, we um, looked at where we're going to locate this amazing service and onboard some additional staff and some partners. And that was actually one of the main things that the Youth Advisory Council had to determine in the early days is, okay, we we have this amazing program Mm -hmm. and organization, but where do we want it to be located? Yeah, location, location, location. That's right. And I had no clue because I'm like, I'm I'm old. So uh. (laughs) (laughs) not at all. Not at all. So I'm like, I don't know. Um, but long story short, they, they said it was important that it was centrally located, but not on a bus route, close to parks and different modes of transportation, not downtown, like they found that's too overstimulating. Similarly, I thought at one time maybe the mall was an option, but again, too busy. So um, we're, you know, looking to set up a permanent spot um, in the not too distant future, more in the Eugenie Dougal Let corridor of Windsor, if you're familiar with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but we didn't want to wait for that to happen. Um, and so we've been operating since March of 2022 um, in a cottage on the Maryville site at 3640 Well Street in Windsor. And uh, it's been amazing. So we've already seen like some growth in um, programs and services that um, are offered there. But I also want to mention that it's, you know, Canadian Mental Health Association is the lead agency on this project. But it certainly would not be possible without um, some of our partners like Maryville. So, um, you know, they've provided us with um, a a place to at least deliver services for um, the interim. The bridge is um, in Leamington, but we also knew from the outset that it was very important to support youth not only in Windsor, but also in the county. And that's very top of mind for myself and the team. Um, So we've already been able to have one of our social workers go out there once a week um, and offer the counseling supports out of of the bridge. So that's amazing. Longer term, we want to set up something more fulsome, but at least there's a little bit there. Um, Hotel Dew Grace Healthcare has regional children's centers, so they're a par- big partner. New Beginnings, um, the Windsor Essex Community Health Center, and the Teen Health Center, so they have actually um, all of these partners offer some kind of in, in- kind support. So our, we have two nurses that are offering primary health care out of the wow. house. Yeah, and they're from the Teen Health Center. So Every one of these partners has added to the complement of services, and we say the more the merrier because it just creates such a uh, a rich offering Mm -hmm. for youth in our community. Mm -hmm. So um, from Monday to Friday, Mm -hmm. 1 till 6, you can drop in um, and you can have immediate access to either a social worker, uh, therapy, there's different educational and recreational groups. We have peer support. Mm -hmm. We have addiction supports. Um, 
we have pet therapy happening tonight. Uh, I just talked to the manager today and starting in October, we're going to have someone looking at like financial fitness. Um, so just, you know, what does a budget look like for young people oh, saving yeah. for a house? Is yep. a, Yeah. Oh, a part, yes. You know? yep. <laughs> so it, it's, it's truly amazing. And I love talking about this project because it's one of the instances where we took feedback from the community and we're really addressing a need because we knew youth and their mental health was struggling even before March of 2020 mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic hit and then it's just been even worse since then. But yeah. um, it's, it's a big need and so this fills a tremendous, tremendous gap. Hi, my name is Ed Armstrong. I'm the Inspector of Professional Advancement with the Windsor Police Service. With this position, I oversee our training branch, community services, as well as recruitment. As you know, Windsor is one of the most diverse communities in Canada. With that being said, our goal is to ensure that our police service represents our community. If you know anyone from your community that believes in our core values and will be an asset to our organization and serve the community with honor and service, the Windsor Police Service is currently accepting applications for the position of cadet. We encourage you to have them apply. Although patrol and ensuring the safety of our community is our number one priority, the Windsor Police Service offers different departments that may interest you. To name a few, our Major Crimes Branch, our Forensic Identification Unit, Emergency Services Unit, and our Marine Unit. Which one interests you? So you want to know how to become a cadet? Simply visit our website at windsorpolice.ca under the Career tab or visit oacpcertificate.ca. I'm sitting at my desk waiting to see your application. a couple questions mm -hmm. um, in relation to that. So I know uh, hopefully there are some youth that are going to be listening to this program. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might have simplified questions that, you know, we're not really addressing. So I'm trying to think of things like a youth. So I'm a youth that ha has been struggling um, and um, with some mental health situations. I don't feel that my parents are really understanding me. I can't talk to anybody about the issues that I'm having, um, whether they're identity issues, anything like that. Um, and I'm looking for a safe place. I hear about your, uh, the programs that you're offering and I come into uh, your, your place of business and I, I walk in, what can I expect? What, 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 I open these doors what happens next? Okay, that's a great question. Um, it's also part of the model that this should be be the least, or the, I'm trying to think of the way, we don't want it to look like a doctor's office. Right. Mm. We want right. it to be warm yeah. and welcoming. Yeah. So um, we're, we're starting, you know, for, for example, work on our permanent site. And when I talk to designers or, you know, architects, I'm like, thank Google office. We want a fun, interactive, dynamic, safe space. Yes. So you would come in and uh, you complete an intake form on one of our iPads, and uh, our intake clerk will, you know, look at that and see where you, what you're needing on that particular occasion. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we have the social worker or the therapist right on site, and you just wait, you know, or not, depending. You know, there might be one person in there, but it's very short. Mm -hmm. And you go and you, you talk to them. And if they're not the appropriate provider or person, then the model is very much those warm handoffs to um, someone else in the community okay. if that's needed. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been actually a lot of that, though, to be to be honest, that um, the youth that have used the hub thus far in our mm -hmm. community have found that a lot of their needs are taken care of at the hub. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, it's just knowing you're not alone. Yes. And um, having that safe space to open up and talk. Mm -hmm. And I think any one of us on any given day could benefit from that. So 
the other good thing is that the younger younger generation and our youth are are more open and willing to share their mental health struggles, mm-hmm. um, which is healthy and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so to go back to your question though, you just come in, you complete the intake form, and then you get um, merged or, or you know arrangements with an appointment right there on the spot with someone to sp- to speak with. That's we, awesome. Yeah, we That's also have really um, yeah. a peer support worker too. Mm-hmm. So if the therapist or if someone's busy, there is someone there that you know you can talk to and mm-hmm. and uh, and go from there. Another quick question. So I also as a youth that is having some issues, um, I'm afraid that one of you are going to disclose what I tell you to my parents. Mm -hmm. Is that something I need to worry about? Absolutely not. Um, We have to uh, adhere to the privacy uh, laws. So, um, yeah, what you say in in there stays Mm -hmm. in that room and with that uh, counselor or provider. And we do not disclose anything. Even accessing the services, you Mm -hmm. it's informed consent. Like you don't have to have a parent's note or or anything like that. What stays there, or what you say and and share there stays. Um, I should also mention that it's um, for youth age twelve to twenty five. So it doesn't end at the eighteen, and that's an important part of the model as well. Because what we had heard and what we've seen at CMHA is that when you transfer from the youth services to the adult sector you can just get lost in the cracks Mm -hmm. and that's been a big issue Mm -hmm. um so this eases that transition and that we can um, treat individuals from that 18 to 25 okay okay um so yeah you know going along those lines with with what bianca's um talking about you know the youth come in you know their intake what are some of the you know we talk about the stigmas of mental health what are some of the things that um you know, the youth coming in or even the community that, you know, we can kind of dispel, um, you know, for the youth and what kind of education are they getting on that? So, you know, they can relieve some of those, those stresses towards that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think first and foremost is that, uh, you know, every one of us has mental health and we have to take care of it. Like we do our physical health and that can take some time and focus and energies. Um, and knowing that you're not alone. So I think just once you go in and you see some other youth that might be there or some of the offerings, like I think there's that sense of belonging um, where, you know, some individuals that I've spoken to that are in that age demographic might think they're, they're, it's not normal what they're experiencing and having this heightened anxiety and stress mm-hmm. and depression. Um I think just knowing you're not them knowing that they're not alone and what they're feeling doesn't make them weak and it's not something to be ashamed of. Um, and we all have highs and lows and sometimes we need additional supports to, to deal with that. Sometimes you might need another mode of therapy. Sometimes you might need some medication and every one of us is different, but it's, you know, it's not, it's not all doom and gloom. And, and I think That's been hard, especially for those having to do online schooling for the last year, feeling that isolation. Um, So I think the the hub addresses a lot of that. We do recreational activities. You know, not only are they fun, but it's also an opportunity for some of these younger people to, like, you know, kind of tread lightly. And you can kind of go there and do the cooking class or the art group is really popular and just take it out for a spin and then see what it's like. And that's, you know, one of the objectives for the group is providing some kind of orientation to what what the hub's like, what kind of people go there. Um, You know, and I I think we go out of our way to be warm and welcoming and making them feel um, that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not doesn't make you abnormal. And there are there is help um, available. That's a community um, mm-hmm. that you're building there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, community turns family, and uh, you know, from there you, you're working together uh, to make something beautiful. And like you said, feel welcomed, feel a part of a group. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're there. Um, you know, we talk about social media. Um, you know, you're on social media, but we talk about uh, being online with school and 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 those issues. Um, how has that impacted, um, you know, I don't want to talk, you know, facts or anything, but how's that impacted the youth, um, when they come in there? 
Yeah, um, I think the last few years have been really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's going to take us a long time to all of us. I feel like I have PTSD from the last (laughs) few years. It's like, I don't even want to think about it. It was, you know, just all the uncertainty and unknowns. Um, Yeah, social media, it can be a great thing, but it can be such a bad thing. And I think we can all benefit from some social media breaks and... and, Mm. um, you know, it's. I think it's just opening up perspectives and in, in sharing that, that you need to get good sleep. Because I know sleep hygiene has been a big focus for the school boards, too, that you're not going to function if you're on your phone um, 24-7. A lot of them sleep with their phone. Like, yeah. you know, I think it's just um, providing education uh, to the youth and parents um, that everything's good in moderation. Um, the online schooling, yeah, that's been, you know, really, really tough. And like I said earlier, the isolation, the loneliness, and, um, you know, it's just kind of normalizing, trying to normalize again that like there's life outside of your home and get outside and, um, become a productive member of your community. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a struggle, uh, but it's something that we're working hard on. Yeah. And so it touches us all even you know, even with social media, myself, you know, I've done it where I got to put it down. Yeah. But it does have those um, those positive aspects. And I'm sure you those are some teaching tools that you yeah. use. I just think that I always say I would not ever want to be a teenager again. Because, <laughs> or in high school. Because it was, like, challenging enough or hard enough, um, you know, in the 1980s, 1990s, when we didn't have, um, like, our iPhones or, or whatnot. And... Now to see, okay, so and so is having a party, and yeah, I wasn't invited, or so and so has this mm-hmm. new piece of clothing, or the new vacation, or the new car, and it's like, you know, it's never enough. You just yeah. always feel inadequate, I'm and just to keep up. yeah, so keep it's up. it's not healthy for any of us, especially when you're in your formative years, and you know, I don't, I don't know, I, I think. It, it's it's a little frightening for the the future because we are so connected and technology is such a part of our lives, mm-hmm. but there's a balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I I totally agree with you. I think that's a great point to say that, um, you know, we we all adults as well. We're all guilty of you know continue just swiping. Mm-hmm. Oh, they went on vacation. Mm-hmm. Oh, they did this. Yeah, they did that. Yep. Um, but let's just say again uh, that. You know, because our youth are con- consistently on their phones and chit chatting with each other, and um, if a if one youth notices something abnormal, um, somebody making certain comments in certain ways, they feel that there might be something wrong with their friend or just acquaintance, somebody that they know. What should they do to maybe hopefully make get them connected? Mm-hmm. Opening up the conversation yeah. and asking some hard questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, are you thinking of harming yourself? Yeah. Are you know, how Be are you? Very direct. Yes, okay. direct and, um, you know, don't beat around the bush, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, and if they're not, um, you know, I wouldn't do, a, we shouldn't be one and done either. So if, if you're really sensing some unease or something isn't right and you bring it up one time and it goes nowhere, I, you know, try not to just, leave it and let it simmering if they're still not receptive um maybe talk to a family member or a teacher or someone that you trust um and let them know and i think even just you could share a resource Mm -hmm. brochure or you know i know the schools are really good like with their um their guidance programs and and having supports available it's just that there's not enough right there's there's heightened need i spoke with um a high school guidance counselor just passed this past May or June. And uh, she said her day had been spent dealing with students having panic attacks for upcoming exams or tests or just assignments, right? So um, that's the thing, that there's just a lot of need and not enough support. So um, it's nice, again, that we have uh, a hub that we can at least direct people to um, for for some short-term supports. Okay. So how, how was the relationship with, with the schools? I, I see that you're talking with the counselors. Um, I know I talked to our, our youth um, in policing initiative uh, students and, you know, they said, uh, you know, they're seeing that action happen in the schools, but, you know, they need more, yes. more. So 
Um, you know, can you talk about uh, how are we as a community working on that? Mm-hmm. Well, the school boards um, have been very uh, open and um, willing to share information about the services offered at the Youth Wellness Hub. So um, that that's a that's a good thing. I know, um, you know, this one of the school boards has Edsby, for example, and they posted flyers, or we have event calendars every month that we share. Um, similarly with St. Clair College and the University of Windsor, we have connections with them as well to to share the information. Um, it, but I think it's a lot of repetition. So I might think that I'm repeating myself, but if I can let someone, one new person know about that, they're, you know, you're not alone and there are places to go, mm-hmm. that that's a good thing. But um, certainly our educational partners are so important. They, you know, these individuals, these young people spend a lot, great deal of time. Um, but at the same, at the same time, when we were talking to the Youth Advisory Council about where to locate the hub, they very much did not want it located in a school because that had been suggested at, at some point. But they really want that separation. Um, and going back to stigma, they want some, they don't want everyone in their, you know, at the school to know knowing they're their going, they're knowing their business, <laughs> yeah. which, right. uh, you know, that could be the same for a lot of different, Absolutely. you know, you don't need people knowing. Yeah, I get it at work too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right, yes. Um Yes, yeah, so they're important, but they're they, they're doing I know as best they can, mm-hmm. um, but there's just the demand out se- exceeds the supply. So right. anything yeah. we can do to, um, you know, um, mitigate and address those gaps mm-hmm. is is a bonus. Yeah, I think it's great that um, that that youth uh, group that meets. Um, you know, I come in every day with my students, and I, I'm. They're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, like I said, we're not young anymore. I don't, I'm not a teenager. I don't want to be one again. But um, I, I'm sometimes like, I don't want to tell them what to do. Yeah. I, I want to hear what's happening, and then we work with it together. It's the same thing when we're police officers in the high school. You know, our presentations need to change because it's what happened in the 80s and 90s is not happening oh, now. No, it's very different. So um, I think that's a great model, and one I think we would want to use in our community service branch is, you yeah. know, speaking with the youth. Um, when you met with this group, what type of techniques were you using to like, you know, stimulate that conversation on, um, you know, growth in the program and and Mm -hmm. growth in them? It's, it was interesting. I, I was really insistent that, uh, I think, you know, it was one of, in one of those waves when we were allowed to see people, you know, six feet apart, masked up. And I thought, okay, for this first meeting, I'd really, if we can pull it off, like them to do it in person. So we managed to make that happen at the Kaboto Club last September. And it was amazing that they were so passionate about what the Youth Hub could be and the potential mm-hmm. and, and the need that they gelled really well as, as a group. And we did have individuals, you know, the, the program services 12 to 25, and we have individuals you know, across those ages as part of this youth advisory council. And they are, yeah, like they gelled. It was amazing. And we, you know, I, when I talked to some colleagues too, I was like, wow, I didn't expect them to, you know, it was like they were all becoming best friends in, (laughs) you know, a couple hours. So I think they just all came from the same place. And that was important. Like there was an interview process and making sure their values and what this was all about aligned. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we, our operations manager there, Michelle Rochelo, is pretty amazing. Like, she's an amazing individual and really, um, you know, listens to them and engages them. And, uh, I mean, she has her master's of social work. So, um, but I think it's just, like you said, listening to them and what you, the information you can gather just from that is is so amazing. Like, from the outset, it was like, well, we may need to make sure we have gender neutral washrooms. We need to make sure we have accessibility like all these, like not that we wouldn't have thought of those things, but uh, they're, they've just had such richness to the conversations and, you know, different things that are happening in their lives and how that can inform decisions and programming at, at the hub. Like, you know, and a lot of them are leading some of these groups. Like one of the individuals, she's amazing. She does a poetry group because she's mm-hmm. really good at that. Mm-hmm. Another one is you know, really good artist. So she leads a lot of the art activities. So I think giving them those opportunities too. Mm -hmm. Um, And the fact that there hasn't been a lot of turnover and that they've stuck with it, that 
is amazing to me too. They're just so, um, they're so dedicated. Yeah. You're sticking with them, that consistency. So mm-hmm. I know I, from just talking to you to see how it's going, I, I could see why they keep coming back. Cause you have that, that consistency mm-hmm. and they see the growth and, and you're allowing that you're facilitating their growth, mm-hmm. but they're doing it themselves. Um, so what's coming up in, as, as in, you know, events and uh, initiatives for, uh, the hub and the Canadian mental health association. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot I there see it is, yes uh, um, well l- as I've said we're working towards a permanent site for the the youth hub and uh, we have um, identified a space and we're working with uh, the property owner and the architect now and while we have uh, government support for operational funding we do need to do some fundraising to support some capital needs and um, the development of some satellite sites for the hub. Like I've mentioned, Leamington, that's the ultimate uh, goal. Mm. Um, so uh, we'll be launching uh, an aggressive, uh, ambitious fundraising campaign in the not too distant future. So um, we're hoping our goal is $5 million. So, wow. yes. But ambitious. it you can do it. Yeah, yes. we can do it. I, I think we're the, the community to do it. I, I've, um, I've spoken to colleagues at other hubs and they don't live in Windsor and they've been uh, pretty successful because we know, I think it's important to support youth. They're our future generation. Mm-hmm. And if we look at what's happening in our world right now, I talk to so many people every day that can't get good quality candidates for jobs. We need this next generation to be productive members of our societies, of our communities. And we need to support that. And that's, you know, just from an economic development perspective, that's another reason why this is so, so important. Um, So, you know, I I think it's, there's a business case around supporting it as well. Um, But we do already have some um, exciting um, major donors that have committed to the project. So we'll be sharing that in the not too distant future. The other thing is that um, our amazing friends at Tim Hortons and their Smile Cookie campaign. Right. uh, Last year, the hub um, was one of the beneficiaries, uh, one of the charities supported. And we will be doing, we are one again this year. So September 19th to the 25th, eat lots of Smile Cookies. All right. And get my cookies in. That's right. (laughs) A reason for you to eat badly that day. Yeah. (laughs) Sweet sound. It's a good, it's a good excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe working out again too. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, last year, our our share of that was 100000 So it's, wow. not, it's a lot of cookies. That's a, lot. a lot of cookies, <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, also, it's Suicide Awareness Month in September. And uh, we've done a lot in the last uh, few years, the, um, including a big community walk. So we've had to pause that. Um, the last two Septembers, but it is happening this year on September 25th at the St. Clair College Sportsplex, so a 5K walk. Everyone is um, invited to attend, and it's free, so uh, come on out. The last time we did it in person, there were over 700 people that participated, so wow. it was pretty big. And um, what's so um, amazing about that walk is just it's the meaning for families that have lost individuals to to suicide just that a coming together and you know paying tribute to individuals who have died and again that sense of connection so um and so that is uh happening as well that's awesome so get your cookies get your cookies mm-hmm. and, get and then go out. walk yeah, yeah. it's right. a win-win it's it a is. win-win yes i like that yeah <laughs> that's uh, and you know windsor essex again you know the fundraising has been great since the soul project yep. so um let's keep it going um, yeah. I think this is a uh, mental health impacts us all yes. and our youth, like you said, um, it, at all levels, it's helpful. So, um, I just want to thank you, oh, Kim, for well, today. It, it was a, you know, a lot of information, yes. but it was, it was very in depth. Um, we're excited about the hub. Um, Windsor police, uh, you know, loves to be a part of that. Um, and we fully support it and we'll support those cookies. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget. Yep. And yep. Yep. And we'll be there every step of the way like our community has. So I appreciate you for coming out. Uh, Bianca, another great one with you. you. Always hold me down. So that's another episode of 519 Connect. You can get us on all your platforms. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again.